Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo. The wind was cold and bitter. It tore through the railway siding that dreary September day. The thick clusters of railway lines stretched out into the distance, looking as though they could go on forever. There were dozens of trucks loaded with coal, petrol, and livestock. But few people were about. In the signal huts, the men brewed strong tea and smacked their arms across their chests to generate some warmth. Then, running down the track towards the station, was a man. Middle-aged and out of condition, he was panting desperately. He staggered and almost fell. And then, with a superhuman effort, he reached up and wedged himself between two good trucks. He crouched back and listened. He's here somewhere, Betty. That's right. We've got to get him. Shoot on sight and shoot to kill. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. say, once an OMO user, always an OMO user, because there's just no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water OMO. It solves Mrs. Sutherland's washing problems for her. Very dirty oil or grease moth. Yes. If you use cold water OMO, there's no trouble at all. It comes out very, very easily indeed. There's no washing problem too difficult for cold water OMO. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. Don't just admire your little girl's complexion. Share it. Nice Castile is doubly enriched with lanolin to keep your skin soft and young. Pure, mild Nice Castile for a complexion that never grows up. Episode one of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel begin their investigations into a curious train of events. The man squeezed between the two railway trucks, held his breath, clutched at his briefcase, and waited. The wind roared through the station. He heard snatches of conversation wafted to a truck. You take that side, I'll take this. Uh, look under the train, it could be hiding anywhere. The man guessed from the voices that it would only be a matter of time before he was discovered. He slipped from his hiding place, dashed across the track and made for an empty wagon. <laughs> Breathless and exhausted, he hauled himself into the wagon, carrying his jacket as he did so. Oh, done. I've done it. Oh. He lay face downwards in the darkness, safe at last for a while. But the search went on. The man called Freddy kicked at an empty beer can. He swore incoherently. What the devil is he at? The man in the wagon knew it was only a question of time. He stood up and quickly removed his tie, doubling it up and knotting it, prepared to use it to strangle anyone who attacked him. Freddy, moving down the line, paused. Oh, there, what's this? A length of cloth torn from a jacket. And that means he's in here. Freddy clambered into the truck, paused, and peered into the half-darkness. He reached into his pocket, withdrew a small automatic, but he had no opportunity of using it. The tie was thrown quickly around his throat. <laughs> Me? Oh, you... <laughs> you don't want to kill? But there is no... no chance. <laughs> In Mrs. Peel's apartment, John Steed had assembled a toy train on the carpet and was demonstrating the art of shunting two trains whilst allowing an express to roar around on its track. You see, Mrs. Peel, it takes a bit of working out. The express doesn't stop. The other trains have to be moved from that siding to this one. 
suffocate. But why? Huh? Well, why do we have to create the problem in the first place? Well, it's my nephew, Willie. He's retarded. This will give him something to concentrate on. Well, if we can't do it, how can we expect a retarded child to? That's a reasonably good point. You didn't move the point, Steed. That's why the crash occurred. Well, perhaps I'd better give him something a little more simple. Hmm, I think it would be a good idea. Oh, excuse me. Emma Peel? Mrs. Peel, is John Steed with you? Yes, yes, he is. Who shall I say is calling? Uh, Lucas. Uh, just tell him it's Lucas. Uh, it's urgent. All right. Steed, it's a man called Lucas. He wants to talk to you urgently. You right. better take it. Of course. Hello? Steed here. Steed, Mark Lucas. Look, I'm onto something big. I, I can't talk now, but you must meet me off the 810 train at Norborough. Got it? The 810 at Norborough. Yes, yes, I understand, Mark, but, but why... I just killed a man, and I may have to kill again. But you must help me, Steed, you must. Right, the 810, Norborough Station. I'll be there. Trouble, Steve? Sounds like it. We've got to stop playing at trains, Mrs. Peel, and start taking them. Come on. <laughs> Some hours later, Mrs. Peel and John Steed found themselves on Norbera Station. It was still cold. Oh, this had better be important, dragging a girl away from a fireside. I agree. I think a bed, an mm. electric blanket. I have no more idea of what it's all about than you have. I know that Mark Lucas isn't a man to over-dramatize. If he wants help, he wants help. And who exactly is Mark Lucas? One of our senior agents. He said he was on something big and that he'll be arriving on the 810. You know, I don't really approve of them. Eh? Electric blankets. They make one so self-sufficient. Tell me more about Lucas. Well, he's a brilliant linguist. Been all over the place, all around the world. Announced about the Empire. When there was one. When there was one. Each time the Union Jack came down, he was the last person in the gunboats. Eventually, of course. There were no more gunboats. Oh, exactly. And now, instead of fighting a magnificent last stand on the banks of some tropical river, he's speeding through the home counties on a very cold Thursday. Uh, that's right. And as far as I'm concerned, he can't turn up too soon. Let's walk up and down the platform, Mrs. Peel. This may lead to monkey business. Uh, no brass monkey. Come on, step it up. <laughs> rose unsteadily to his feet, emerged from the compartment, and moved along the corridor, following the ticket collector. It was then that he saw the man Bart approaching. This was the other man who had tried to kill him. Lucas didn't stop to think twice. He stepped sideways into the nearest compartment. It had on the door a sign which read, Just Mary. <laughs> what the devil? Oh, please, do you mind? We have got a reserve notice on the door. I, I'm terribly sorry. I, I, I do beg your pardon. So, so sorry. Forgive me. Sorry. Lucas realized that there was no time to lose. He left the newlyweds' compartment and shot into the guard van. It was empty. He hurriedly placed his briefcase amongst some luggage. The train screeched to a stop at the station. Dobra! Dobra! Lucas got out of the train. The train started up and pulled out of the station. Lucas looked about him. Rain was now falling in the wind. It was dark, deserted. Lucas pulled the collar of his overcoat up around his neck. The train faded away into the distance. Lucas realized that he was completely alone. He walked towards the shelter of the station waiting room, lighting a cigarette. His footsteps echoed out hollowly on the uneven flagstones. The lighter blew out. All was now still apart from the wind. Lucas walked the platform. The waiting room appeared derelict. Nothing happened. And then, the sound of whistling. Faint, but recognizable. The devil? Uh, hello? Hello? Who's there? Who, who is it? Who are you? Put your hands up quickly or this gun might go off. Come on now, do as I say. That's better. Stay like that. 
There's a train coming. Listen to it. Listen, Lucas. As the train screamed through the station, the revolver shot that killed Mark Lucas was not heard. Lucas sank to the platform. The man moved over to the sign that read Norborough. He reached up and removed it. Underneath was an old, battered sign. It read, Chase Halt. It creaked in the wind. The rain streamed down. Lucas lay face downwards. The puddle beneath him turned to scum. Eventually, even the wind died. On the real Norborough station, John Steed and Emma Peel paced up and down impatiently. The train arrived at last, drew in and stopped. Well, this is it, the 10 I don't see Lucas. You think he might have missed it? No, no it was too definite. No one getting off at all. I think we'd better get on the train, Mrs. Bill. You may have fallen asleep. Come on. Steed and Mrs. Peel walked the whole length of the corridor, peering into each compartment. Can't see him. It's very strange. Do you say he's about 50, balding, six feet and rather heavy? That's right. No one like him. Very strange. What's the hunch, Mrs. Peel? I'm trying to get them up, actually. What have you in mind? The guards, then. Look. What'd you say? I'm very intrigued by that sign that we've just married. I don't think people remember that kind of publicity these days. Very odd. Mrs. Peel would have thought it even more odd had she heard what the bride was saying. Now, look, you get away and keep your hands to yourself, Bart. I was engaged for the job, but there are limits. Don't go getting over enthusiastic. My husband is a very jealous man. comes a new way to fight tooth decay for keeps. New fluoride for keeps toothpaste. It's the clear blue way to fight tooth decay, and it's the best anti-decay toothpaste around. New great tasting for keeps toothpaste. The clear blue way to fight tooth decay for keeps. Great teeth are forever. Great teeth are for keeps. New family fluoride for keeps toothpaste. There's just no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Mrs. Gray of Durban has this to say. Uh, I can't even explain it. it. It astounded me. I was really and truly very astounded. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo.